Yeah, we are now live. Hello, everyone. Um, let us know in chat where you're coming in from. Before anyone asks, yes, this will be available on replay. Uh, and what we're going to do today is go through Martin's fault. And Martin, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself, who you are, what you do um, before we before we dive in. So, Martin. Yeah, hi, I'm Martin. I'm uh, head of innovation um, in an IT department of uh, Bertelsmann. It's a large uh, media enterprise. And um, I rely on Obsidian for managing uh, my private life as well as my management life uh, in the company. Yeah, and I'm uh, looking forward to share my um, system with you. Yeah. And I'm from Northern Germany. I, I was just about to say the, the accent. <laughs> uh, okay, so before, before we go in, I do want to say, like, when it comes to starting in Obsidian, is your vault like a, a starter's vault or is it quite complicated? How would, how would you describe your vault? Um, I would say it's quite straightforward. It isn't too, too complex. Uh, I use some plugins to make it more comfortable and um, like the outlining um, plugin, for example, but um, uh, I like to keep it simple. So, so it should be simple to adopt too. Nice. Good. I'm sure the viewers will love to hear that. So um, I'm going to share the screen now and uh, we'll, we'll get into seeing what the vault's about. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, then I just start um, with um, the first thing about my vault is that I like to take um, notes in a periodic way. I, I like, I really love periodic uh, note, uh, note taking. And this is why I'm using, uh, I'm using the calendar plugin with um, the periodic note taking, um, where I organize nearly all of my notes in uh, like a folder for the current year, like 2022. Uh, and in there, I have um, months and um, quarters. Uh, so uh, what I'm doing is um, I, I like to have a, a top-down planning, where I start with goals that I define on a, a year level, uh, on a, a quarter level, uh, like the fourth quarter of the year, I like um, to manage like uh, which concerns and milestones do I want to tackle. And this breaks down until the daily note where there are then um, my actual tasks. So maybe um, just start with the daily note. I just press uh, Command D to get to my daily note for today, which is Monday. And um, here you're seeing my uh, default template. Like it's really just um, the current date and um, the day. It will be in the November folder where I like to um, sort my notes in calendar weeks. So currently we have calendar week 47. So this note will be then in 47. Um, so, quick question. Do you manually yeah. put those in, in the folders or are they done automatically in some way? Uh, no, most of them are done automatically. Um, I'm going to the setup menu to just show it quickly. Um, I have to just think on which plugin this does. Ah, it's a plugin called Periodic Notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you can define what kind of periodic notes you want to, uh, to use daily notes, weekly notes, monthly use, um, notes, quarterly notes, and so on. And you can define a format where I am, uh, I um, inserted the, the folder structure I like and the naming and edit a template. And this way, uh, every node um, is created automatically. Nice. Just wanted to clarify that because I know I'm going to get questions in the comments. <laughs> how, do you, how do you do that? That's, that's a cool thing um, about this um, live stream. Uh, by the way, uh, I have a template of this uh, void. Uh, I can sh share the link um, with you, Danny, and maybe you can share it with your community afterwards. Yeah, you I'll can put just, it in the um, description. Oh, okay. I, so I you can, can just copy it and ex explore it uh, and um, explore details uh, I left out, for example. Um, maybe one, uh, another word about the why. The why is this periodic note taking? Um, I am a heavy note taker uh, for like 10 years or so now, or even 13 or 14. And um, I started with Evernote, and uh, there was a time where I only had uh, task management systems like Todoist. Then I used Notion then Rome, and finally Obsidian. And um, the thing I noticed is, is that all systems, like uh, folder structures or semantic structures, uh, everything, uh, uh, all of these approaches broke down at one point. 
so it worked for like one month, two months, uh, and in the third one, uh, third month, it didn't work anymore. And the only constant, the one thing that uh, works every time is the time, sorting notes by time. And this is why I so heavily rely on this periodic note taking, because uh, when the November is done, the November is done. I can then decide in December, like to have a slightly different approach or slightly different templates. Um, and I don't have to um, discard all of my obsidian, but just um, have a clean clean slate with the next month or the next week or whatever. So this is uh, the why behind it. Yeah. Nice. Um, for clarification, this is yeah. a demo vault, not your real vault. Is that correct? Yeah, um, uh, sorry, uh, my, my private stuff wouldn't be so important, but I have work stuff in my uh, main void, um, which is why I cleared everything out and did some um, dummy data in here. All right, good, good. I, th I thought I'd clear that up because uh, you're missing like 10 years worth of notes according to your, your yearly folders there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, when the nodes are a bit fuller, it, uh, it's uh, very nicer, but um, I just add uh, some demo data on the fly and then you'll see it. Um, yeah, maybe let's start wanna... with this. Yeah. I was going to say, do you want to go down the daily note to see what it looks like? I can see some timestamps and I'm curious. Yeah. Um, maybe first about the theme. Um, this is a regular uh, things theme, um, I guess. Yeah, it should be the same. Uh, I just have a look. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a thing theme, and I did one um, custom edition. So you can add some uh, custom uh, CSS uh, snippets um, in, the, in, in the settings. And one thing I added is this underline. I love underlined um, um, headlines because it feels like a, a bit more structure. And this is the only customization I did there. Yeah, yeah I do like it. Hmm. Yeah, my, uh, my da daily note has um, certain uh, segments. I have uh, even shortcuts to. Oh, so far. Um, I have a certain set of uh, main um, main segments. Uh, the first one is um, I introduced daily um, journaling for myself a couple of years ago, and the first thing I'm starting my day is um, is I write a journal. Like uh, I just write a natural language like. Uh, today is really stressful because um, um, Project C uh, has a oh, deadline yeah. and so on. And the cool thing about um, uh, journaling in, um, in Obsidian is that you can link stuff. I, I used to uh, do my journal in day one. It's another Mac, uh, another app for, for MacBooks. Uh, and there you can, uh, of course, write your journal too, but you can't link your journal with, for example, tasks or have backlinks to your project notes and so on. And so um, in the morning, if I just um, brain dump all of my thoughts into, into my daily note, I can link it to um, all of my other stuff I, I have in this, um, in this void. And this makes journaling and obsidian so powerful. It's not the most beautiful one here, uh, doing it here, but it's the most uh, poly, uh, powerful one. And the cool thing for me is, um, as you might um, hear, uh, I'm not a native um, English speaker. And the cool thing is I have um, Grammarly installed. installed. It's like a grammar checker for uh, English and uh, it, re it works too with uh, Obsidian. So it um, tells me in this, this case, for example, that really isn't necessary or that I wrote stressful wrong. This is why, uh, while writing my journal, I, I write it in English actually, um, I uh, improve my English. Uh, and this is also quite a nice feature. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna just add American English because like the the grammar in like British English and American English differ slightly, and it's as I'm not that interested in lingu linguistics. Um, but there are arguments backwards and forwards in academia whether what words should be used, how words should be spelt, and it's such a pain. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. What I really love about Obsidian is that you can uh, focus on the coin segment. So this daily note can get quite long. Uh, in the end of the day, it's like um, several thousand of words and so on and uh, tasks, I take it and so on. But if you like, you can just focus on this morning diary. And uh, there are uh, some plugins in Obsidian that makes that even cooler. Um, in my case, I have set up a hotkey for that, like um, command 
you don't know what the C do you see my I you don't see my hmm. if it's a um, demo vault then the hotkeys may not have been ah. brought over. I know you know um I I installed an app so that you can see what I'm typing. Ah yes the, um, shortcut. I know um what I wanted to show is this one. It's called a silence, I guess. We can, have, we can have a look at the plugins in a minute. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, quite still, but um, this way it gets even more focus because I can focus on a, a single line where I am right now. Yeah. Do you okay, do that when um, you're journaling? Uh, I, I do that every time because um, the, the mind isn't, um, isn't suited to handle too much information. So this is, by the way, why I don't like uh, dashboards. I, I, did, I did it myself in Notion. I had those wonderful dashboards uh, and I saw in the Obsidian community that also many in the Obsidian community are trying to replicate these dashboards in um, Obsidian. But for me, it was all, always overload, too much information, like um, six boxes with tasks and different views and uh, the journal somewhere and the habit tracker. You just get overloaded. This um, um, I try to avoid as much as possible. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. What I also like to do, uh, and this is connected uh, to a later part, uh, I like to brainstorm my concerns. Um, the thing is, um, uh, task management, uh, I show you how I handle tasks in my world uh, too, but um, if, uh, I learned to, um, to differentiate my concerns with my tasks. Um, what I mean is, um, the, the longer you do your task management and fill it with tasks, it can get really big. Like uh, at some point you have 200, 300, 1,000 tasks or so in your Obsidian Void if, if you're using it for a couple of months or so. Um, uh, and But the thing about us humans is that the most, the, um, the really important task you have in your head, like 10, 10 things, your concerns. And this is why I like, um, beside my formal task management, to just put my concerns like I have to uh, do X, Y, or must tell someone in here. And uh, when I show you later my uh, planning or uh, how, I, how I do my planning in Obsidian, um, um, you will find it there uh, through uh, data views. But um, for the moment, I leave it with that. Right. So the, um, the first part of my daily note is a reflection. Ah, um, actually, I forgot something. The, the very first part is that I look at my um, mindset stuff. So um, I uh, like to remind myself about a certain uh, mindset um, yeah, issues I, I want to, um, to um, commit to in, in the day. Uh, for example, uh, I get easily distracted by stuff. And the first one is about distractions at all cost. In, the, um, in this way, having it right at the top in, in the daily note, you can't miss it and uh, can make sure that at least once a day, you just look above uh, in your um, the mindset um, yeah, bullet points you find most important uh, for the moment. I, I have something similar in my I, I, daily note, dashboard, whatever you want to call it. Um, and instead of having the four bullet points of a mindset, I have my focus points for the month, quarter, and year. So I don't, I don't stray. It keeps me aligned with whatever my higher level goals are. Um, so at the moment doing the doing the course, like I know that that's what I need to do. <laughs> like I need to get yeah. that done. So I, I don't suddenly divert to doing something that looks fun, but doesn't actually relate to what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> so it's a nice way to keep me on track. But yeah, having a mindset there sounds yeah. sounds very similar. If you wonder, or, or the viewers wonder about how to, how to make these call outs, I, I think you made a video about that, right? I, I saw it on your YouTube channel. Uh, I don't think I've made a call out specific video, but I've certainly mentioned call outs quite a bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, because there was, um, you can make columns with call outs. That might be the one you were, you're referring to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Okay. Yeah. Um, these are called call outs and they are native in Obsidian right now, but there are also plugins for that, like uh, admonition, I think. You can have a look later on that. Yeah. Okay, but uh, so the first part is reflection. It's my journal, and I have a journal, for, uh, or um, I like to do it in the morning and the, in the evening, and um, this is why I have two sub sub headlines here. Um, the second section is my journal. Um, I found for myself that it's not enough to have like um, daily ta uh, or tasks um, um, allocated to the day. 
Um, even if it's only 10 or 12 tasks you have for the day, it could be um, too much overload. And this is why I like to uh, allocate my uh, tasks and even my chores to uh, specific time slots. They are fixed. Uh, in my case, like um, from six to nine, uh, I'm doing my morning routine. I have the checklist for my uh, uh, morning routine actually right here in the template. Like I, um, the first half hour is knowledge reading. So yeah, I read books in the bed. Um, the second one is um, where I write uh, a blog article for half an hour. And then there are some additional uh, morning routine stuff up until I'm doing my uh, workout. And this way, um, I can check it here right away and uh, see what I want to do. What, what calendar app do you use? I'm curious. Uh, uh, what what? Calendar? calendar app. Yeah, do you use like Google Calendar, Outlook, or something like uh, I use Morgan? Um, for my private stuff, I'm using Google Calendar. And for my work stuff, uh, Outlook. But it's a very protected environment, so I can't connect my Outlook to uh, anything. Mm. Uh, I'm just wondering because like having, having those, so I have those things inside of my Morgan as tasks uh, mm -hmm. and it's interesting to see you do them in Obsidian. I mean, you could do them anywhere. It's interesting you see, to see them in there and not in your, what I would class as like a, a time blocking sort of app, like a calendar app. Yeah. The thing is, uh, it might, might be a bit um, misleading because of the timings. Um, I don't use it really as like, like an agenda. Um, I have that uh, time slot in my calendar too, but it's just a block from six to nine. And uh, uh, in my calendar, there's, it's just morning routine without details. Uh, what I need to need. need uh, so it's um, so if you are um, um, right in your routine, you know every step. If you've done your morning routine like uh, 30 times in a row, you know exactly what to do. But um, I've sometimes after business travel, like uh, if I'm on business travel for, for a week, I didn't do my morning routine. Um, and then I'm back at home. Uh, I'm li uh, uh, laying in bed and I don't know what my morning routine is. It's, it sounds funny because I did it 300 times or so, but uh, I don't know it. And um, having my obsidian open, and just seeing, ah, right now I'm supposed to read and not uh, to play on TikTok or something like that <laughs> uh, really helps myself. But um, uh, it's better, uh, better in my daily notes than uh, in my calendar. This way I can uh, add stuff here like... Um, um, uh, today I read um, uh, books. I oh, am yeah. rich dad, poor dad, for example, and Ken Ling. Mm -hmm. what, what I did here, um, write with other stuff in my board. Ah, by the way, uh, you might wonder about the checklists and the bullet points. Well, uh, did you? Uh, no, no, carry also? on. Okay. Um, I mentioned uh, I'm coming from Rome, and um, I guess many of you um, at some point tried Rome or yourself, and I really loved Rome for its um, uh, graph-like workings, or uh, I think it's called outlining, like just mm -hmm. having bullet points, and every bullet point stands for its own and so on. Um, and this is something I really missed from Obsidian, uh, but I installed a plugin. It's called, I think, outlining or something. I can show it later. Uh, which um, mimics some stuff you can do with um, those outlining tools, for example, that you can just um, um, modify the hierarchy of these bullet lines, or I have um, uh, shortcuts for moving moving bullet points up and down, which could be, um, a, bit, um, could be a bit hard to do it manually with, with copy and paste and so on. So it makes um, outlining uh, really easy. And I just have to press Command Enter to switch between bullet points, tasks, and done tasks. Really quick. Cool. So this is something I wanted to talk about on the channel at some point, and I'm glad you brought it up. The reason I want to talk about it is because Outliner is a plugin. What you've just shown there, you can do with the default hotkeys. So move line up and move line down are default hotkeys that I use. And then you can toggle through the checklist, the to do done and to do not done, again, with a default hotkey. And you can indent and unindent with tab and shift tab. So I don't know what else Outliner does, but all of the things you've just done can be done with default hotkeys inside of Obsidian. So I'm curious, they, they never used to be able to. They added them in, I think it was version 13.1 or 2. Uh, but no one seems to have spoken about it. They just still use Outliner. So I'm curious what else Outliner does, if it does anything else. I can't name it exactly. Uh, so uh, I know what you're talking about. For example, if I'm um, I configured this um, standard Obsidian 
um, line shift uh, on option. Then I can move a white diary here up and down. Um, and I have the same with the outlining plugin. What? <laughs> um, I, I can't name it. Uh, oh, oh, God, what? Uh, I can't name it exactly, but um, the behavior of outlining is a bit more on point. It's a bit more sem semantically intelligent if you have like substructures. Um, uh, so, so it will consider what what line it is above. So it will sort of skip bits sure. if it needs to. Is that right? Yes. Okay, that but uh, to be honest, um, um, to confirm your point, um, for the most part, I'm just using the standard uh, Obsidian hotkeys for um, moving, moving the points and impending and, and unimpending. So, so basically, you're right, but I think there are some nuances uh, which outlining does better. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those small things on my to-do list, on that ever-growing to-do list to explore an Obsidian that's like way, way, way down there. I just figured, oh, oh while well, you're yeah. talking about it, I'm going to ask. <laughs> No. I'm just glad that it's uh, working at all, uh, and it um, feels very intuitively. So um, I just set it up once, and it works, and I'm so fine with it. Uh, it yeah, it's really cool. By nice. the way, this, this is another thing I like about Obsidian. Um, the way it um, lets you customize all of your hotkeys, because at some point you have to um, decide for your hotkeys, and you're just taking your first intuition. So what, what's the first feeling? What's the hotkey should uh, look like? Uh, and in most of the cases, it really works. And um, this way, um, I have so many apps uh, where I forget my hotkeys. But here in Obsidian, somehow, uh, they're, they're very intuitive and uh, works really great. Yeah, I, I've appreciated the ability to customize the hotkeys. So at the moment, like I've got the QWERTY keyboard at the moment on, on my lap because mm -hmm. I was working earlier typing. Um, but I have this. It's it's called a Caracorder. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, and this is the entire keyboard. Um, Ooh, and, cool. uh -huh. Yeah. So I've done a video on it. Um, so you can have a look if you want. But basically, the, the keyboard is on sort of joysticks. So mm -hmm. control shift is a little bit harder to do on the Caracorder. And I was using control shift on the keyboard quite a lot. But Control Alt on Caracorder is way easy. I just push two fingers forwards and then any other key. So I've just changed all my hotkeys from Control Shift to Control Alt, and it it, it was just easy. It was fine, <laughs> uh, and now I'm just mm -hmm. as quick on there as I am on the QWERTY. I just need to um, learn how to type faster on that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, um, another thing I like to do is, um, uh, I have to show it at a later point when I'm um, a bit below uh, in the other areas, but if I have um, tasks allocated for today, like I have a data view, or um, I just, um, I'm just doing a um, demo entry, uh, I head back to Sunday, and let's say it's um, yesterday, and I have a task for today. Um, the way I'm doing it is um, I have my bullet area and my daily note for that. Uh, it's um, my capture everything area. If I have thoughts, ideas, uh, task ideas, and so on, I just capture it uh, in the bullets uh, area. And let's say I have a task for today, like, um, like um, doing whatever. Um, I um, like to pack um, my tasks, of course. Uh, I can show it a, a bit later in more detail, but let's say this is um, priority two must do task. I mean, but may, uh, maybe let's uh, talk about right now. So um, uh, with using tasks, I don't rely just on checklist items because it's so easy to um, add checklist items to Obsidian that they are get, uh, it's, um, they're getting too many, uh, too, too really great quantities. And what I like to have is to have this uh, task tag to every real task, to um, yeah, to, to to have a bit more protected area for these tasks, and they have uh, a task structure. Like uh, every um, task categorization begins with task, and then I have um, like I have must do tasks. Um, these are my real um, most essential work tasks, and they are I differ three priorities: P one, P two, P three. Um, Obsidian handles that really well, that I can just um, have hierarchical um, text with a slash. Um, then I have a want to task. These are my personal desires. I want to create a blog article, or uh, I want to travel somewhere and so on. 
here I'm not using priorities, but um, more like timeframes. I want to stay, do something soon, now, or someone. Then I have uh, optional tasks, can do, and I have chores, have to. So this is why I attacked um, uh, every real task of, uh, of mine has uh, such a tag. And then, of course, I'm using backlinks to tag, for example, persons. Um, I have to look my demo data. John Doe, for example. Let's say uh, this is um, a work task I discussed with a work colleague. So I'm uh, tagging that work colleague here. And let's say it's connected to one of my live areas. Um, we didn't talk about that, but um, I, I think it's quite popular. But uh, mm -hmm. I differ my um, work area, uh, my, my live areas, like I want to be a creator and artist, for example, in my personal life. Or in my main life, I'm um, a manager or I have lifestyle and leisure, and, or health and fitness. Um, so let's say this, this is about health and fitness. I could uh, well, um, make it a work-related uh, manager. And then um, sometimes I even have a specific uh, projects or deliverables. And I can tag my uh, projects, let's say project B. Um, or even, let me check if I have deliverables. Like maybe a content plan is topic here. I could have content plan. Um, but please note, uh, I'm not doing all of these tags in all tasks. I just think about what, what are the important aspects I want to know about this task, and I add some. Um, usually, it's not more like one or two tags, uh, backlinks I add to my task. So now comes something special, which I love about a certain plugin. Um, remember, it's Sunday. We are yesterday now. And then now I want. I have to do this uh, Monday, so today. So I can just type add, and um, now, uh, so yesterday I would have to write um, uh, uh, tomorrow, but since it's Monday already, I type today. And this add today uh, links it automatically to my daily note for today. And going back to today's note, so I'm going to November 21st, um, I have that to do, to do section, and there are this planned, uh, sub headline and now this uh, task I uh, noted sometime in the past gets um, uh, filtered here because it's tagged with um, Monday. Um, so this is really cool and possible with that uh, data view um, plugin. Do you want to quickly show that query? Uh, I personally do it with the tasks plugin. I'm curious why you don't use tasks and why you use data view. Um, uh, I, um, I tried it once, um, but I didn't like um, the, the, um, there are some uh, custom tags or some some um, properties there, yeah? like scheduled, finished, uh, priority, and so on. I, and I didn't like it with these icons. And I recognize that I don't need it really. I can just do it with data views myself because I don't um, use um, timings. I, I, right. I'm completely fine with using just uh, backlinks and tags and this way, I just don't need some uh, task plugin. Yeah. Okay. You know, because with the with the scheduled, I think no due date. I use the due date. I don't use any of the other dates. Um, but mm. I have the due date automatically put in for today, and then I know tomorrow that I need to do it because it was due yesterday. Um, and then if I have it due something else, I can change the due if I want, which is obviously what you've done there with the at whatever link i assume that's using natural language dates or something similar as a plugin is that right yeah so this uh, at thing is natural language um so the natural language plugin I, I want to highlight one um advantage of using uh, links the cool thing is um it works with the graph view i, I don't know if you uh, see some some of the graph view the I think if you're using um, if you're using the task plugin, they are handling the dates uh, manually. And here, since I'm using backlinks, the, um, the date uh, links will um, will get shown in the graph view right. because they are real links. I understand that, but my graph is far too hectic to be able to use <laughs> to use I, those I, I, I'm not using it uh, too, but yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's one it, of those it, like it, it's a nice thing. It feels to me um, like. I have another mindset thing. Uh, it's called um, subtraction beats addition every single time. And this is why I try to do as many things as possible without special plugins and so on. To be fair, I have a lot of plugins, but <laughs> I, I you've got more to, than me. 
<laughs> well, more I than me, my main it. fault. Uh, while that's, we're, while that's we're the thing I'm doing here is if I'm checking off a planned task, uh, it will get pushed down to that completed part autom uh, automatically. Yeah. Ah, I love Very that feeling, nice. and checking this podcast. Oh, the first <laughs> question. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I figured we'd ask this because we're in task management. Why do you use your task management in Obsidian versus a dedicated to do app? Uh, been there, done that. Uh, I loved uh, Tick Tick and uh, Todoist, or even a uh, Microsoft To Do. And uh, but at some point, I came to uh, one uh, insight. Um, every time I, I use this um, apps, I had too many tasks at one point. It uh, accumulated over time. Uh, uh, the start always feels really great with uh, just putting your um, the tasks you, you have in your head in that uh, task management app uh, felt really great. But the thing is, they don't forget. Every task you put in there sits there until you check it off or discard it actively. And um, what I learned is that I can't handle more than 40, 30, 20 tasks anyway. And um, I learned especially that I want to have uh, my notes with my tasks. And this is why um, I uh, like to keep it simple. I don't want these sophisticated task management tools. I just want to have checkboxes. To be fair, it got a bit more complex with these uh, backlinks, but um, it's basically just typing what you have to do, uh, having a couple of links or like one tag uh, to your liking, and it's done. And the cool thing is um, the system forgets tasks. If um, there are some, if I have tasks that are somewhere in like June, in, in my June periodic note taking, I know I, I won't do them anyway, and I just forget them. Um, yeah, so, so that's my reasoning behind not using um, to do list or so. Understandable. Yeah, by the way, um, I, I had a look into the productivity Reddit a couple of days ago, and there was uh, someone asking, oh, uh, my to do list is getting a bit laggy um, after, I, uh, um, after I having uh, 4,000 tasks in it. And I said, wow. Uh, you, you can't tackle 4,000 tasks. It's impossible. Um, this time you have, um, uh, this way you have so much overhead just scrolling through your tasks that you uh, procrastinate all day long managing your task management without actually uh, tackling the task. It's uh, very, very sad. So I did um, on the last live stream, for those watching on the replay or anything, you can find it on YouTube. Um, it was with uh, Sam or Shabagom. And what they said is that if you have lots of task query blocks inside of your pages, that's what can cause the delay. The actual task block itself inside of Obsidian doesn't make much of an issue. But when the task query block is trying to query all of the tasks and there's lots of them, that's what can cause the delay. So it might have not been the amount of tasks in the vault, just the amount of task queries that the person had in the vault. I don't know. This is me guessing. Um, it was a to-do list. This was not about Obsidian. Oh, right. As okay. Post, uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. But anyway, so um, I, I guess I guess the core answer to the question is um, what's cool about Obsidian is that you can um, have your nodes and tasks side by side. Oh, you yeah. can uh, just, um, for example, what I like to do is if I'm having like my list of five tasks or so here, I pin my tab. This way, it won't get closed if I click here. And now, if I click on doing whatever, it will open this Sunday daily note. Uh, actually, I like to have it in a, in a separate um, um, window. And then, uh, if I have uh, additional thoughts about that, uh, like um, don't forget to do X, Y, or um, some image, I can just put it there, or even have like uh, real sub notes where I link it to another uh, note file. Um, I really like that to, to be able to do that. Yeah, something that, um, so I was I was listening to a podcast by one of the creators I quite enjoy watching, uh, JHP Gray, uh, GCP Gray even, and uh, they did a, it was like a three hour podcast. And they, he spoke about using Obsidian and task apps. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight was that he likes the fact that when he's writing a script, if he's got a really small to do, like check this figure or find that source, he can put it in the script and the task appears in his page through data view and he can just click back to it. Whereas if he was using Todoist or things and TickTick were the two apps he personally explored, um, then he'd have to 
remember, okay, I need to find this figure, put it in the task app, wherever that is. And then when he sees the task app, he'd have then have to find the location in the note to actually act on it. Whereas because those tasks are just in Obsidian, data view, you click it, it takes you to that part of the note and it's just quicker, easier for all of the scripting. So he separates his tasks from sort of script related note taking tasks and then take out the rubbish, hoover the floor. Like they're two different sets of tasks. That's his mindset anyway. Um, and I, I think I'm similar because I use my calendar and Obsidian tasks, but yeah, it's everyone's certainly different. Mm. Yeah, there's this here, um, this data view plugin is really great. So the uh, sub bullets get displayed here right, right away. Um, I want to highlight another thing. Um, I mentioned that I like to have my tasks allocated to specific time slots. Like for example, um, this time slot from 9 to 11.30, I call Eat the Frog. It's, um, I just put one, my, my most, my, my task that um, emotionally stresses, stresses me the most, I put in there and just aim to tackle this the one task, the most important task for today. And for that, I like to um, uh, block link it. Like um, I have a plugin that um, ex extends this context menu so that I can copy uh, links, either the normal link or the block embed. And um, I just copy the block here and now uh, at nine, I wanted to do doing whatever. It's now a bit duplicated because it's my plan section and here. But um, it's, um, the cool thing is then I can just focus on my 9, 9 a.m. time box and know what I have to do there. So what plugin was that? Do you remember? Um, it's called... Um, no, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> it's, um, I can tell you what it's not because uh, <laughs> I've got some of them. But It's called Carry Forward. No, Carry Forward was something else. Um, yeah. we, we can go through them later. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you'll find it eventually. Let's uh, let's have a look later at the plugin list. Yeah. Then uh, I probably will remember. But it was a very... Um, I, I think I, I just... Um, the, the cool thing about the community plugins area is uh, that's a search field and I just type something like links or so and then it will pop up really fast. Yeah. Okay, uh, to make the screen a bit less um, full, I close it again. Um, so these are tasks. Um, and um, yeah, my to-do area is are just uh, to, to queries, data view queries. The first one is um, uncompleted tasks that are tagged for today. Uh, and down here completed. Um, this way I can, um, I can hide all of the completed tasks and really focus on the ones that are open. Um, then another part is uh, I like to have a query where I just fetch all of the um, notes I did today. Uh, the reason is um, uh, in my day-to-day -day business, I have a lot of meeting notes. What I'm doing here is uh, I have a um, plugin called um, Quick Add. And uh, in Quick Add, I have um, certain customized actions like Quick Add Meeting. And here I can just type like... Um, Meeting with uh, John Doe or so. Okay. And um, this automatically uh, creates a subnote, which is uh, right in the weeks folder. Now, uh, in week 47, we have that uh, meeting folder, and there is the, the meeting note. Uh, and I have them mostly linked in my um, journal view. Like here, um, sometimes I even write like uh, the time, like the meeting was. Um, Four o'clock or so, and uh, it opens automatically um, this note with a template uh, for meetings. Like, what's the topics agenda? Who were the particip participants? Like, um, John Doe, um, the meeting notes, and what are the outcomes? Mm -hmm. And this is just one example of uh, notes I take across the day. And all of these notes will get fetched together in that view in my notes section. Um, so, this way, I know what happens that day. Yeah, nice. then, that's certainly different from the uh, the atomic note PKM. Uh, what, what we typically see in the PKM space, because it's normally a, a book note or a, a YouTube video note. That's a meeting note. That's more, say, practical. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Um, 
um, 90% of my notes are really about um, task management, actually. It's like a planning of my life. It's about um, what did I learn in meetings? What tasks have we discussed in meetings? Um, uh, which persons are involved? This one is really important because uh, I have uh, many colleagues I'm working with. And if I call, uh, call with a colleague for my team, for example, I can just look up here um, in the search, for example, my colleague, like say uh, John Doe or so, or can go, um, or better even, uh, I can go to the node of that person and through the backlinks, which is uh, here below the node, I can see everything connected to that person. And uh, it's like magic to other people because um, when they tell me about um, something happened in their family or uh, some task we talked about half a year in the past, I have everything here. And uh, when they call me, I open it up and it feels uh, magic for them that I know, know so much and remember so much. It's just uh, using these backlinks. And this is why I so uh, rigorously um, tag people everywhere. If people are connected, I, I tag them. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah, my favorite section is my bullet section. And so um, I'm, um, I walk a lot across the day, for example. Um, um, I, I love doing uh, my, my, my work meetings by walking with my uh, smartphone. Uh, and I have a lot of thoughts, ideas uh, by walking. Or I have to take meeting notes. And um, um, by the way, I love Obsidian for, for its being so con consistent across um, desktop PC and mobile. And, but the thing is, uh, on mobile, you, ca you can't be too accurate with taking notes. And this is why I just take notes here. Like, they can get really ugly with uh, typing errors and so on, like uh, idea, blah, blah, or um, ask and so on. So I just take notes or put images in there, in there or, um, or quotes, so everything that collects over the day. And uh, I have a line here uh, in the evening or if I have time. Um, and when I'm sitting in front of my desktop PC, I, uh, fix, I fix these bullets. Um, like um, if I forgot a tag, for example, then in, later in the evening, I tag it uh, idea or, or I fix um, uh, spelling errors and so on. And uh, every bullet I reviewed, um, I then put uh, above the line. So, uh, um, so it's like a status. Now, yeah, uh, which tasks, uh, which bullet points are reviewed and uh, fine and uh, in order and which one are still open. And um, in the end of the day, or sometimes, uh, to be honest, is at the end of the week or so, or maybe even two weeks, I go all through all of my notes and see immediately what has to be reviewed and what not. By the way, I have another um, life hack for that. Uh, I'm not using fr front matter a lot. Um, to be honest, just two things aliases and this one here reviewed. Um, I have a query uh, to review. And here uh, I have, I have um, a data view which fetches all of my notes where reviewed is still no. And uh, this way I know I like to review all notes at least once. Uh, and if I reviewed some, I change it to, to yes. And then it, um, it won't show here. But everything we reviewed is now we get show here. And this way, I have some quality insurance in my board. Very nice. I assume it's default to no when you create the daily note. Yeah. And then once you've done it, you change it to yes. And, uh, all of my templates, I have set and with um, no as default. All right. We've got another question in chat from Jonathan. So when you make meeting notes, do you input directly into the Obsidian note? or write it down in physical analog form first? Ah, I love the home office for this. Um, when I was younger uh, and at the beginning of my career, I uh, had the fear that if I type in my notebook, it won't, uh, it will look funny because people think I'm scrolling on Facebook as they talk to me and so on. So at the beginning of my career, I took always paper notes. But the thing is, my writing is terrible. And um, I'm much slower in writing than in typing, so it wasn't so so great, um, to be honest. But um, nowadays, in home office and with uh, uh, meetings in Microsoft Teams or Slack or wherever, um, you can just take the notes um, uh, right into the system, like Obsidian. And the cool thing is, you can share the notes right away with the, the other participants. So I like to, um, so I, I 
I, um, I don't want that uh, other participants in my work meetings can see my whole world. But what you can do then is um, you can just drag and drop, like, um, for, uh, I just take the meeting note for that. Uh, you can just drag and drop the meeting note out here. So. Um, and just have the meeting notes and uh, share that via screen. And uh, the cool thing is um, people will see the note and what you're writing and they can correct you. If you misunderstood something or they don't want um, something uh, written in a certain way, they can just tell you right away. And uh, you can guide the meeting uh, with that because you can write, ah, um, my other colleague in the call, um, uh, Jean Doe promised um, to tackle problem so and so. And they see that they have a task in there. It's, and it makes um, meetings so much more productive having this uh, visual protocol. Um, yeah, I love it. Uh, I take my notes right in uh, Obsidian. Um, there's one ex um, exception, exemption. Um, my CIO obviously wants all of the notes in the um, safe environment. So um, sometimes I'm uh, uh, taking the notes in um, OneNote and then, then transferring them later uh, to Obsidian. But um, my uh, CIO don't have has to worry because um, on my work machine there uh, the nodes are local anyway, so nothing gets out to the cloud. Yeah. One of the benefits of it being a local app. Yeah. So right. I just uh, that was a good question, Jonathan. Because I was also curious, uh, and I think that just shows the versatility of what Obsidian can do. Because that's I I have not seen anyone like use Obsidian as a essentially a script for a meeting <laughs> or an outline of a meeting. Um, I knew you could do yeah. it, but actually hearing someone say that they're actually like practically using it, it's just nice to get confirmation that it is being used for what I thought it could be used for. Yeah. And Obsidian is the first time I'm able to do that because uh, in uh, every uh, previous setup, my work life was like in the task management app, like I said, Todoist or TickTick or Microsoft To Do and so on. And my private life, my desires, my thoughts, ideas were in my note-taking system that say Notion or Evernote, and it was disconnected. Now with Obsidian, it's the first time everything goes hand in hand. It doesn't matter if something is work or a meeting. Everything fits in here without getting too much, without um, getting too complex. It uh, works so nice. Yeah. Nice. Good. Okay. So um, this is my daily note. Um, I want to highlight um, how I'm using this uh, periodic note-taking um, quickly. Um, what I'm using is um, I rely heavily on weekly notes. I can create them here by clicking on the week uh, in the calendar plugin. Um, great. And now um, a weekly note is created for calendar week 47. And uh, what I like to do, uh, by the way, this is uh, another advantage of having um, full control over the type or on how you uh, how you create your tasks. Uh, the cool thing is, I can't uh, I can not only attack like specific days when I want to tackle um, a task, but I can always I can also tell like um, I want to do something in week forty seven. And actually, this is what I'm doing um, uh, primarily. I'm not saying I want to do a task like on Monday or Tuesday or whenever. What I'm usually saying is I want to do something this week, like in calendar week 47 or 46 and so on. And then I have all of my um, tasks for this week um, here uh, in that weekly note. And then I have a weekly review process. So I'm going once a week through these uh, weekly notes, and then I can decide, okay, I want to start the Monday with uh, this task, and then, then I get specific and add a Monday as a link to this task. Yeah. Um, what's also cool about the weekly notice, uh, I have some weekly routines, like um, I update my finances uh, once a week, or I, I have to water my uh, plans once a week and so on. I can put it just here as a choice. And um, sometimes week, uh, weeks feel like uh, no progress at all. I have weeks, uh, I have a, like a desk job. And sometimes uh, you're working all day, you have meetings all day, and you just don't see what you accomplished. And it's such a great feeling to look at the, uh, in the end of the week in, the, in your weekly note and see uh, all of the concerns I had for that week, 
or the tasks uh, or, um, uh, or so are, are, are done or um, have a look on how many um, notes I took that week and so on. It's such a fulfilling feeling to have that weekly note where everything that happened in that week is in here. Uh, by the way, um, um, here are some other logics. For example, uh, I've, uh, it gets a bit complex now. Um, the essential few tasks are coming from a data view and the, the origin is in the quarterly planning uh, where I, I'm using a Kanban view. It's, it's the only place where, where I'm using the Kanban view, but it feels um, cool for, for the quarter, it's intuitive for the quarter planning. And here I have uh, columns for every week. And, if I say, um, and what I'm doing here, I'm doing brainstormings about my concerns. Like, uh, I don't know how it's for you, but um, I have always problems in my head, problems to tackle. <laughs> Then it's maybe the same, like the stuff I have in my tasks, but sometimes it's slightly different, slightly different wording or uh, different motivation. And this is why I have like a separate um, way of thinking in my world. It's not only tasks, I have only concerns. Like um, um, I have to prepare my travel or um, shouldn't, shouldn't uh, forget to do it. Uh, and uh, these columns here are then correlated to my weekly note. Um, ah, I have to do that manually because I don't know how to do that uh, automatically. Uh, I, yeah. I would imagine you could Is that when you say you don't know how to do it automatically, is that because of the template generator or? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how to put the week 47 in here as a, a, a variable. So I just, but it's just once a week. So I'm just typing in calendar week 47 for the code note here. You can use templater for that. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not using templater right now. Yeah, template, you can automatically generate the dates so that data view is accurate for you. So maybe yeah. something to explore. <laughs> Another plugin. Thank you for the tip. I, I try that. Yeah, I make life easier. Um, but um, maybe uh, um, about the why. So why I have this correlation to the quarter um, quarterly uh, meeting. I uh, learned about myself that my true planning horizon is the quarter. Um, just thinking in the day or the week is too little. You don't get, have the context or you know, the longer context there. Uh, and the year is too much. You can have, uh, you can have, have goals for the year, but uh, it's too uh, abstract. Uh, the quarter is magic. Um, it's three months. You can have uh, strategic as well as actionable stuff in there. Uh, and I really love to have that overview where CR uh, all, in all of these weeks, um, there are those concerns. And you can't see the beauty here because it's so empty, but in my uh, actual uh, world, um, there are so many um, uh, columns and so many stuff is crossed away. And it's uh, so liberating to see uh, all of the concerns that um, seem so pressuring in the moment, uh, they fly away. I, I see uh, um, all of my concerns in week 45 are gone. Um, I uh, completed it somehow, I mastered it. Um, And in the end of the quarter, I can see all of my results. Um, for example, if I want to show my chef what I accomplished, I can just pull it out of here, of that quarterly concerns can then. Um, and, uh, and for the next quarter, I can strategically plan here. Like uh, in November, for example, I want to accomplish uh, stuff. Um, I can strate strategically plan it, and we'll find it at a later point in my weekly note. So uh, all of my planning layers, um, I think I, I have an image for that. Um, let me show it. It's interesting you call this because I'm, so inside of the strength and conditioning field, there's something called periodization. They use micro, meso, and macro cycles. Uh, and I'm very similar to you. Like days are too short, weeks are too short. A month is about right for me most of the time. Um, but a quarter is just... Yeah, it's it's just a nice overview. It's essentially a mesocycle, three to four weeks. And it's just, well, three to four weeks is a month, but quarter, adding that two or three weeks on top is just, it's, it's a nice overview to make sure you're on track. Yeah. Um, so this is the reason why I don't take paper notes as you see. 
But this is my thinking. Um, I have uh, like a yearly notes, like for this current year. And I like to have like 10 goals related to my uh, life areas. Yeah? Like I want to lose 10 kilograms of body fat or so. Or um, I want to uh, increase my salary by so and so much uh, euros. So I have goals in there. Um, then I have my quarter, uh, quarterly um, uh, Kanbans. So each quarter is a Kanban. And I can allocate my goals because 10 goals can be so overwhelming. So maybe in quarter one, you just start with one goal or two or so. And you can uh, allocate these goals to these quarters. Uh, and you can break them down. So what, what um, for example, if I want to lose 10 kilograms of body weight, I have to uh, maybe introduce uh, one hour of exercising each day or so. Uh, and I can break it down in my concerns, Kanban. And the cool thing is, like I said, you can't have more than 40 things or so tasks in your head. To be honest, it can't be more than 12, probably. And by uh, splitting, uh, it's uh, like divide and conquer. By splitting up your tasks and your concerns to these time dimensions, you can just focus on the stuff that is currently important. You can have all of these uh, logics in the background with your goals, your quarter planning, your monthly planning, your weekly planning. But if you are in Tuesday, you just focus on the task you have on Tuesday. And the weekly planning, they just get relevant on the weekend, for example, for the review. But it's, you don't have to have that in mind uh, in um, Tuesday. And this is the beauty of this periodic note-taking um, in uh, um, Obsidian. Very Some nice. Uh, we have a question that I want to try and get to um, before we move on. So if knowledge management is seemingly not actually the reason why you take notes, why did you choose Obsidian over another app? Now, before you answer that, I do want to preface this by saying I think knowledge management in general uh, is typically associated um, inside of like YouTube anyway, inside of YouTube content creation and, and Discord and Reddit um, as student studying. But knowledge management is more than just student studying and, and topics. It's also meeting notes, business notes, tasks and actions. So I think I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think knowledge management is what you're doing, just not as a student, but as a business person. But I'll let you speak now. <laughs> yeah, um, my notes can actually get quite extensive, but it's usually about planning, planning and review. Um, I also have like book notes, for example, uh, let me show you. So I, I'm doing some of the classic PKM stuff. Uh, for example, um, I like to have uh, book notes, like, um, I have that um, plugin here, which uh, allows databases. And I have a library here about all of my books. Uh, I really like, for example, this book, Sapiens from um, Harari. Um, and I can have some uh, properties, like uh, how did I like it, rating, and so on. And they will get shown in this uh, table here. So this, I, I guess this is classical knowledge management, but um, I'm using it not so much. Um, other stuff I'm doing, ah, I, I love my Readwise integration. I don't know if you know Readwise, but you, it imports all of your uh, Kindle uh, highlights and so on. And you have then these, these quotes uh, right in your world. So this is also, I guess, classic, uh, classical knowledge management. So the answer is I'm using it for knowledge management. What I wouldn't try to do is like replicating uh, Wikipedia stuff here. Mm. Like um, uh, putting all of my uh, knowledge into the world. The reason is, I believe the most important knowledge you have is in your head. And it's enough to have it in head. You will forget stuff. You will miss um, correlations between nodes uh, and so on, um, which I guess uh, the second brain idea is to have all of these connections every time very, very logical. But um, I learned from myself the stuff that is important, like... Um, my favorite quotes, uh, my favorite learnings are just in my head and I can use it in every day. Um, I can't imagine a scenario where I would look up um, these, this knowledge I learn sometimes or I study sometimes in my world, but it's a personal thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah the reason why Obsidian, uh, I tried all tools. Um, like I said, uh, Rome, um, Rome Research did also work well, but the problem with Rome was it got really laggy. So the larger your graph got, uh, so, um, the more un unresponsive um, the, um, the user interface got. And Obsidian is just so fast. You're clicking somewhere, it opens. Uh, uh, it sounds like, like a tiny detail, but um, 
for me, it's a different uh, in feeling home. If, if I opened home uh, research, it, every time it felt like a burden, I, I need to use it, um, but I don't want to. Uh, with Obsidian, <laughs> I feel like home. I really love the morning opening my fresh daily note. Um, I love taking notes on my smartphone uh, underway because it works so well uh, and consistent, consistently across devices. It works on my um, uh, work PC. It works on my private MacBook. Um, it's just the best app. I, I, <laughs> I don't have to collaborate. If I would have to collaborate with team members, I would probably use Notion or so. But as long as I'm using it alone, it just works for, perfectly fine for task management, for planning, for review, for linking stuff. Um, yeah. I think with the, the collaboration comment, I think it's going to also depend what you want to do with collaboration. As someone that's explored collaboration inside of Obsidian and um, actively doing projects with other people inside of Obsidian, the sync, the collaborative sync actually works really well. Uh, okay. So, So unless you're doing live editing, like two people on the same page typing at the same time, there's not really an issue. Um, and even if there were conflicts and someone's data was lost, there's a history because it's on both computers. So you'd be able to find the information if it is removed anyway. Um, so I haven't found any issues at the moment working with other people uh, inside of an Obsidian Vault. So certainly doable. I don't think many people would try because most Obsidian users are individuals, but we'll we'll see where the uh, app goes in 2023. It's certainly exciting. Oh. Yeah, maybe a note about tagging or tags versus backlinks. Uh, in Rome and other tools, I uh, use tags really heavily. Uh, in Obsidian, I, I can't tell you why. Um, I have very little tags. Uh, the most important ones are, um, of course, in this uh, ta um, are my task tags. Um, by the way, if you wonder about this uh, pane, it's a tag wrangler. It's a popular um, plugin for uh, Notion, uh, for Obsidian. And um, other important tags for me are, for example, ideas. I love to collect ideas, but ideas um, uh, um, in earlier times at to-do's and so on, I um, captured ideas as tasks. But the thing is, you have so much more ideas than actual tasks you, you really want to tackle. So it's good to yeah, just keep them separate. Or thoughts, um, or um, what I like to have is a daily reminders. It's like an extended uh, version of this. Um, I have so often uh, situations where I think, um, oh, I don't want to forget something. Like, um, uh, don't forget to journal daily or something. And I, um, if I don't get this thought out of my head, it will, be, it will stick there all day long. But as soon as I put it here and type in daily reminder, I know I have a check of my daily reminders once a day. And I know I will check them eventually. And they're out of the head. And the mental capacity is free again. Um, and what I like to do is um, either just clicking here on daily reminders, then I will get open here, of course, and I can have a look through my daily reminders uh, in this list. But um, I recently found out that you can also use data view for that. Um, I have a note here, tech views. And here for my uh, most um, my most interesting text, I have data views where all of these bullet points are collected um, yeah, for, for some, some of the text, like ideas, thoughts, and insights. Uh, it's quite new to me because I thought that data view doesn't allow to capture bullet points, but yeah, I, I found a, a post in a, in a bulletin board where that works somehow, like magic. Yeah, data view, data view can basically get anything, <laughs> anything that's in any page. You just need to know how to find it. Um, mm. It doesn't index just normal text content. I think that's the only thing it can't get. Um, but you could probably put it, you could probably find it using a JS query. It's not something I've explored that extensively because um, I don't need to. <laughs> All the important stuff's so either a task or in a bullet or in a call out block or been block referenced in some way or yeah, I, I can find it elsewhere. I don't need a data view query. And I will admit I don't use, actually, I don't think I have any data view queries in my vault. I, I just mm. use DB folder instead because I prefer the visual click boxes rather than a data view query. But oh, I, I like that um, this uh, this uh, bullet point filters from Rome Research. So I guess I try to replicate it. Uh, and it works. 
The funny thing is, uh, to be honest, I have these views where I can see all of my ideas, thoughts, and so on, but I never look at it. So it's really just for peace of mind. So, like I had that thought, it was important to me to put it down uh, to get mental clarity. Um, but yeah, and I could look it up at some point, but I never do. <laughs> yeah, I use um, I use a button on my daily note. Uh, so <laughs> Sam, who did the recent uh, live stream, the last live stream, he develop buttons and essentially I push the button it brings up a queue for like a quick ad I type the thing in and then it's it's oh. saved in my daily note um so I don't have to go to another page or anything I just click the button and the amount of times I click the button and oh, obviously the button works on my phone as well so um I don't have to remember a hotkey or a shortcut if it's on my daily note I push the button add the thing in and it's there it's saved so it's it's out of my head Oh, cool, man. maybe I should try buttons. So for me, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, using uh, hotkeys, or if I press Command O, uh, no, uh, oh, that's wrong. Command P, uh, I have um, all of my click at actions uh, pinned to the um, top. It's because of mobile, because I don't know if you know it, uh, if you're using Obsidian or mobile, if you uh, swipe down, um, uh, in the default configuration, your command palette will open up. This way, uh, if I'm on, on mobile and, and I just want to add a bullet point to my current daily note, I just swipe down on my mobile app. Then I see, ah, uh, here's a quick app for bullet. I can click, um, uh, don't forget, um, blah, blah. And it will put it automatically in here. Hmm. Uh, and I have similar one for journal. For journal, it will add uh, a time. I saw a person X. Uh, yeah, it will. Yeah. I, I guess I could configure it to put it in the right section, but uh, it puts it just in the journal. Um, yeah, what and... I tend to do on my phone is put them in my uh, in the mobile toolbar instead, because I have the swipe down for my daily note, because um, obviously you've got the tabs. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have them in the toolbar. So I use advanced mobile toolbar or command L, both the plugins do the same thing and they add a row to the toolbar. So instead of having to scroll left and right, it adds two oh. or three or more. Um, so I have Bloody. like a, a tick for adding a, a, a task, uh, a bullet icon for adding a, a bullet. <laughs> um, and then you can add any command to it when you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the toolbar. So I don't mm, use cool. the command palette, but I have thought about it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, cool, cool approach. Um, yeah, I, I, um, so I guess I, I could have um, use for a, a certain set of bullets, uh, um, uh, buttons. For example, I like to put um, concerns into my quarter planning with such a quick add, or to create sub notes that are put in the weekly folder and so on. So it works really fine. Yeah. All right. So I think I could have, it... yeah. I was going to say, is it time to go through that list of plugins? Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me check. I prepared a script for today, of course, on things I could show. I don't have to show everything. Ah, I want to. Uh, uh, I want to share one life hack. It's not so much correlated to Obsidian, <laughs> but what I like to have um, as a source of energy for myself is like an hourglass of my lifetime. So. Um, uh, I guess I could do it somehow in Obsidian, but right now it sits in my Google table. And I have a Google table where, uh, can I zoom in here? Um, where I have like for every week and each year one um, cell in the table. Uh, so um, I have 26 weeks here, so half a year. And uh, on the left side in, in the rows are my, is my age, like from age zero to 90. And uh, all of my past is black, like the, the time will run out. And um, my hopeful upcoming um, lifetime is uh, blank. <laughs> and this is great motivation to see that. Um, for example, uh, recently I was, um, I found that again. So I, I don't look at it daily. It's like every couple of years and so on. And I was surprised to see that um, again, another three years have gone by. Uh, and um, it's really cool to yeah to be conscious, uh, be aware of uh, like time. Time is running, and it's a great source of energy for productivity, self optimization, and so on. Um, so before I think about my goals for that for the current year, 
I like to have a look at that Hourglass uh, review. Oh, nice. Yes, you can do it in Obsidian. There are a couple of different ways. <laughs> Oh, okay, I, I've uh, um, I've seen uh, heat maps and so on. So they look similar. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of plugins that you could do it with. You could do it with data. Yeah, so, you could do it with Templator as well. Obsidian is just okay. so flexible. Fine. All right. Yes, I can hear you. We, yeah, we're still good. <laughs> okay. But my headset uh, had some. So we talked about the strategic top-down planning. Uh, we talked about handling thoughts and ideas, um, like uh, how I capture stuff. Text versus links, handling of notes. Yeah, uh, most of my notes I like to have in the weekly folders, like meeting notes or any other sub notes. Uh, only certain kind of entities I like to have um, aside from this um, year folder. For example, um, persons, um, my core principles. I have a set of core principles I like to have in my life. Uh, I have notes for them. Um, notes about my uh, life areas, um, my library. So book notes uh, I'm taking. It could also be a podcast, of course, and so on, audio books. So my library. Of course, I have uh, a MISC section for some other notes that might occur. Um, persons and projects. Ah, oh, yeah, and uh, topics like crypto. But that's <laughs> basically it. Everything else goes into the weekly notes. Sounds good. Oh, uh, and then ah, they're really, they're really my favorite plugins. <laughs> but uh, maybe let's do this in the setup. Yeah, if we, if we work our way through the plugins, um, you'll probably get to your favorite ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, Admonition is um, is a plugin that allows for callouts. It isn't really needed anymore, I guess, since Obsidian has them by default. Um, yeah. what, what it does give you is flexibility with the icons. So you can have different icons and different colors and things like that. So oh, if okay. people use a lot of call out blocks, then it's useful. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't actually know that many people that use call out blocks personally. Um, oh, but, yeah. I, I could leave it out probably too. Um, I really like the calendar app for this uh, widget right at the top right. Yeah, it works well um, with periodic notes. Yeah, exactly. Um, I liked, um, or um, what I really liked about Chrome Research was the capability to link bullet points. So not only link um, uh, notes, but bullet points. And Obsidian can do this, but um, I found it a bit lacking right now. So there are a couple of um, plugins right here that aim to improve that. For example, carry forward is, um, is a command. Um, where uh, if I if I want to put something from from some some other node into my daily node, I could um, do that via a command. Mm. Um, it's uh, like, uh, but um, uh, I, I like the way with ah here we talked about it. Cop blocky link. Uh, I like the um, uh, um, option with the context menu better, and this is done by copy block link. Um, I like to. I like the feeling of having that checklist plugin. Uh, we didn't see that here. Where is it? That's my. Hmm? Is it not showing? Checklist. Should be in the command palette. If not, just turn it on. Um, all checklist pane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like to have it because it uh, shows all of my checklists in, in the context of my task. Um, thing. Uh, but strangely, I don't use it. I like to have it, but I, I never, uh, I'm never using it. So yeah. That's, that's something I've actually found with a lot of plugins is I'll install them because I like the idea of them and they work. And then uh, like two weeks will go by, I'll look at my plugins and go, oh yeah, I've got that. I don't use it. <laughs> oh. um, completed task display, uh, I'm not using anymore because I'm using filters right now. But if you are a really, um, simple Obsidian user or plain Obsidian user, and you have your daily note just with checklist uh, stuff, um, you could use that to hide um, the button here that you can hide all completed tasks that they get, just get uh, um, hidden in the daily note and you just don't see them. Uh, let me show you. So here's the checklist thing. And if I click on task hider, Doesn't work. No. Okay. Hmm. So, so maybe it's uh, broken the plugin. 
But uh, like I said, I, I'm don't, don't using it anyway. Yeah, uh, I think with data view and um, database folder and so on, you are more familiar than I, but um, I love to use this, these data views to connect my um, planning layers with each other. Um, the da uh, database folders I like for having um, in my uh, persons, for my uh, person nodes, for my library nodes and so on, to have like, like a nice looking um, overview of all my nodes there. Um, but here too, to be honest, I, I'm not using it too extensively. Uh, what I really like if, is Excalibur because I have Obsidian on my iPad. And uh, this is actually the first app that really allows me to combine uh, handwritten notes with uh, my regular task management system. Because on my iPad, uh, if I want to draw something, um, I, I just add like an embedded Excalibur um, yeah, paper and just can just draw my um, on my uh, iPad and it will, uh, get, will uh, em get embedded into my daily note or wherever, or a meeting note. So really cool. Did you hear about the recent um, update for Excala Draw with the inclusion of OCR through Taskbone, I think it is? I saw it on Twitter, but I uh, didn't have a check what it really looks like. Yeah. Yeah, so when uh, for anyone that has Excalibur, I think it was mentioned by Mage in the chat. Yeah, there. Um, uh, they the recent update. So if you were to go into the community plugins and then update all, there will be an update for the Excalibur, and it will show you an introduction video that he um, put in his YouTube channel. But yeah, now OCR basically means it can read handwritten text and things from PDF documents, and it puts it into the file so that it can be searched through Obsidian. I think that it, that is my understanding of the update. Um, obviously. If you use the app, you'll be able to correct me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's it's nice to see OCR coming to Excalibur as a, as a combined app rather than having to use two different plugins. So excited to see where yeah. that goes. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah, and uh, like I said, um, it's, it's the first setup where I can really mix my uh, written notes with my um, yeah, broad notes. Uh, every, everywhere else it felt... Not not right like an Evernote or a Notion. It was hard. Uh, I don't like Apple Notes, so yeah, really cool. <laughs> that could be controversial. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't get it. Uh, it's, it's a standard um, recommendation to use just use Apple Notes, but I, I don't get it. Um, what I like is this focus mode. So I have um, I have hotkeys to hide um, my uh, side side panes. Like uh, let me think. Oh, yeah. Like a command a zero and a question mark for me. But the thing is, I always have to wonder about uh, the hotkeys for that. And that's a plugin, uh, focus mode. And here I just have, I just can click like um, to hide my sidebar. Uh, I can also assign a hotkey to that. Makes it a, bit, a tiny bit easier to um, hide the side panes. Yeah, my, my hotkeys are all to them left and right with the arrow keys. So all left is the left side and then all right is the right side and on the on this the caracorder um alt is up here and then the arrow keys are like in here so my hands are always on it so it's just really easy to go backwards and forwards uh, i do it a lot <laughs> cool yeah a gallery um i think i've prepared a note for that i have to just think about where i put it is it in the projects Perhaps Oh, I don't. I don't think I've ever actually clicked round Obsidian. <laughs> I've always used the quick switch. Yeah, um, I just wonder where could I have put it. Ah, here. Um, as something uh, I found strange about Obsidian was um, that I wasn't able to put images side by side. Like um, uh, all my screenshots were really huge and uh, took so much place. And I found a plugin. It's this gallery plugin where um, you can just put um, your uh, image embeds right, um, yeah, right next to each other. And we get displayed side by side. So, yeah. What if, plugin if you was have, that, uh, This one is called um, gallery. Oh, okay. I assume Same. there's some CSS. Uh either in the YAML or in the background to help that work. Uh, was that a question? How it uh, yeah, so the, the CSS does, or does Gallery use CSS? Was there something in the YAML of the page? 
Um, oh, so I, I, think, I think I had to install this uh, contextual typography plugin. And it can be that I added a custom CSS snippet for it, but I, to be honest, I don't remember. Some, uh, <laughs> the, the documentation was available. Uh, and yeah, if you go into the page, uh, into the file, yeah, at the top, is there anything? I know, no, this, this, is, uh, yeah. this is unrelated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure. <laughs> oh. Okay. This Interesting. Oh, I'll have to have a look at that. I'm curious, yeah. Uh, Garbage text was a nice idea. Uh, so, um, of course, I wanted to show my real world, but uh, I, I looked for a way to um, to hide my sensitive data. But so the idea is nice, but the thing is, it hides too much. If I type garble text, it's all of the text. <laughs> it's a nice touch, a touch for, um, for uh, yeah, screen pass. Yeah, but but it doesn't. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's um interesting. Uh, <laughs> Uh, garble, so. Right, yeah. I guess I guess when you're sharing your screen, that could be useful. Mm. But oh, guess not. Hmm. Yeah, then uh, ghost fade uh, focus and uh, stille. Stille is the other one. Let me see. Stille. Yeah. Uh, stille mm -hmm. is um, yeah. quietness in uh, English. It's a German word. And uh, this is uh, something I showed in the beginning. I can type. What is it? Ah, yeah. Command uh, Shift S, and everything will darken out um, despite uh, uh, and only the currently selected uh, column is uh, highlighted. It really helps to focus. Uh, sometimes I like to write block articles here, and it helps to focus on the current paragraph you're, you're writing. I wonder if that works with the typewriter plugin, because I know typewriter allows you to follow down in text. It sort of acts like a typewriter. Um, so yeah, I wonder, okay. if, they, uh, I I wonder if those two can be combined. Yeah, because a lot of writers, uh, especially Scrivener users, will be familiar with the typewriter sort of look. Um, essentially, when you type and you push enter, the the page sort of goes up, so you don't have to change where you're looking. Uh, oh, cool. So yeah, I, I haven't used typewriter for a while, so they might have something similar to that with the plugin. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if not, you could combine those together, and that could be really useful. Yeah. Yeah, then um, ah, I, I, I think uh, image toolkit could be also the one that allows for that um, side by side uh, images. Um, uh, Kanban uh, I'm using for my strategic for my quarterly planning. Uh, language tool um, was intended as an alternative to Grammarly. Uh, the cool thing about language tool is that it's um, integrated right here. Um, let me go to a note where I have actually some text. Um, that's this one here. And uh, this is sync. Ah, it's this icon here. Oops. Uh, you can um, enable it for automatic checking, or you can trigger it manually. Uh, and it works similar to Grammarly and will uh, underline like uh, wrong uh, spelling and so on. The cool thing about uh, language tools is that it also understands other language like uh, German. So if you want ah. to spell check German and so on, um, language tool is a language tool um, plugin is the way to go. And then I have a local REST API. Uh, the reason for that is um, I have a Chrome add-on, like in the Chrome browser. Uh, if I want to save um, a bookmark to um, my daily note, uh, I can do that. And I guess it uses this local REST API. Right, um, nice. Markdown formatting assistant, you have the side pane that uh, gives some hints about how to use Markdown. I'm not a Markdown um, expert myself. <laughs> um, mind map visually visualizes um, bullet points as a mind map. Really cool. I don't use it too much. Um, natural language dates allows um, to uh, write dates uh, and um, to link daily notes with that uh, add key. Um, note refactor I'm using sometimes if notes, uh, if notes are getting too big, then I split them down to uh, sub notes and uh, note refactor helps with that a bit. I, I tend um, to go the other way. <laughs> I tend to merge things together and make notes bigger. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I usually start with one note and at some point, um, sometimes I get so big that I split them down to sub notes. Yeah. Do you split them down from the headings? Yeah. 
No, because well, you, uh, uh, you can do that with the core note composer, because if you right click, it says extract heading. I use that sometimes. I haven't oh, used okay. note I have yeah. yeah, I haven't used Note Refractor because I haven't haven't found it a use for it. So I might have to have a have an explorer because you can, like I say, you can do it in the default Obsidian mm -hmm. app. I think that was brought in version fourteen, maybe thirteen nine, thirteen eight, something like that. Doesn't matter, but it's there. <laughs> okay, I give it a try. Sounds perfect for my use case. Less is better. Less is better. <laughs> yes. I guess you are all familiar with that new plugin. It was hyped on Twitter and so on. And um, I really like it because it reminds me of home research. We can see uh, all of related or stuff that could be related um, to a link right into that context menu. I guess it can do many more things, but um, yeah. Alone uh, yeah, feature, that was... So that's a new one from TFT Hacker. I've actually spoken to him about it um, because I, I I put my requests in, as you do. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's certainly a plugin that's been asked for by a lot of the Roam and LogSeq users that have sort of come over because there was one called Block Counter um, from Sam Shabagom, who they were on the stream <laughs> recently. I feel like I'm just referencing that stream loads. Um, but they had done that plugin uh, and it didn't work great. Um, as Sam admitted in the stream, um, and TFT Hacker has just done a really good job with Strange New Worlds, and I'm excited to see where it goes because I, I've spoken to him and he's got some other ideas, and I'm like, oh, that could be good, <laughs> but I don't want to speak too much because like pressure. Don't want to put any pressure on him, but yeah, it's it's exciting, and it's a good plugin. Yeah, uh, I love that about Obsidian to see that uh, community um, uh, and the community development development on improving it. Um, the downside is uh, there's so much uh, new um, news about Obsidian with new plugins and new possibilities that there's a danger to spend too much time tuning your Obsidian. <laughs> um, um, I, um, at some point in my life, uh, especially uh, with Notion, it was um, especially hard. Uh, I had some Saturdays and so on where I just tuned my dashboards and um, uh, how databases worked. And I spent, I, I, I'm calling it overhead time. I spent so much time into overhead time without tackling uh, any real task. It's like procrastination. It's um, as much worse as, as scrolling on Facebook or TikTok. Um, and the cool thing about Obsidian is um, if you don't pressure yourself too much with all of these exciting new plugins, uh, you can set it up once and it will just work. I, I didn't touch my system for quite a while and uh, it just works. And um, yeah, I really like that about Obsidian. Yeah, that's, that's something I spoke with. Um, so for those unfamiliar, John, who was the first live stream I did in this sort of like group, uh, I also have a podcast with him. That I speak with him every Saturday. We spoke about this recently where Notion, when there's an update, you're kind of forced to change how your Notion works because if the databases are changed, you have to use the new databases. You can't use the old version or anything. Whereas with the with Obsidian, when there's a new plugin, you just don't have to look at it. You just don't need to use it. Um, so you're not forced to follow the updates, follow the news, follow the changes. Whereas Notion, to me and to John, it felt like I needed to pay attention and I needed to keep up to date, which then <laughs> more changes to dashboards, more updates. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I like that Obsidian could just be a simple text editor and that's it. Yeah. yeah you, you have to re restrain yourself a bit, but uh, <laughs> it's doable. Um, and uh, at the same time, it's uh, great to have all of these options uh, if, it's, uh, if you want some um, advanced stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the spaced repetition uh, plugin, but uh, I'm not using it yet. But um, I uh, always looked for a plugin that allows me to do my learning uh, right in my uh, main note-taking tool. Didn't work so well in Rome and in um, uh, uh, Notion. But here in Obsidian with that plugin, it uh, works really well. For example, it could be like uh, English words or so on, where I, uh, I could just tag it, like uh, have a bullet point with an English word, could tag it with learn English and so on. And space repetition will bring it up uh, every, uh, every couple of days. And um, yeah, it helps learning. Yeah, it replicates Anki inside of, or Anki slash Quizlet inside of Obsidian. From my understanding, I only know roughly how it works. I haven't fully explored it yet. Oh. Yeah, we talked about Tech Wrangler um, and timestamp isn't so important. Text generator uh, is um, nice. 
Um, I, I can't show it to you here in my demo vault. Um, let me open up my main vault, or uh, at least some other. The thing is, uh, you have to, or um, let me show the origin. I, I don't know if you're all familiar with this. Um, there is an AI out there that's called uh, OpenAI GPT-3. Just as a, a bit of insider information, I'm exploring Text Wrangler because of uh, one of the Obsidian team, actually, uh, Capano, the, I guess you could say, visual designer. They've put a couple of posts on Twitter about using text generator and AI writing and writing out scripts and stuff. So when I saw you, you had text generator on your uh, plan, I was like, oh, I want to see what you're doing with it. <laughs> So it's, I've, it's um, I have many touch points with uh, those AIs in my um, main profession. Um, and um, for those who are not aware of, uh, there are two cool AIs. The first one uh, is about generating text. And the other one is about uh, uh, generating images. Um, there are various technologies, but I'm just taking this one, for example. Uh, and I stick with text, for example. And this uh, AI works as, uh, as follows. You could write like, um, write 300 words about um, how to succeed. Okay. But let's say I'm a blogger and I want to have a blog article about how to succeed in life. And you just click on submit and the AI will write the text for you. So this is the original technology from OpenAI. And this AI is uh, accessible via API. And this allows other tools to integrate this AI into yeah, other uh, environments. Uh, and Obsidian can do that too. So uh, now I have, I have to find my other <laughs> the moment. The, the navigation. Yeah, so um, I think Andre Kumpf, I don't know how I've, I, I think I've sent that right. Um, the person in charge of Oh, Nest Labs, there we go. Um, she recently did a video on YouTube basically making a load of blog posts through AI. So she didn't write any. She just had a load of titles and then got AI to write the blog posts, which was exciting to see. And it was it was interesting reading through them because, I mean, they, there, were, there wasn't anything in there that was, like, groundbreaking because most of the AI just generated text that was read, written somewhere on the internet. But it's certainly interesting to see AI create those things, especially as brainstorming triggers or ideas and things like that. And I use a tool called Elicit to help me with that as well. Have we, uh, have we got it sorted? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. So let's say um, I have some of our text I saw that I want to give the AI. I can just uh, like, yeah, I don't know the command by heart. Uh, I think it's J. Let's take general text. And yeah, it's uh, I push that to the AI and uh, and recommends me to do a crossword puzzle. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, and um, you you can customize the prompts. So uh, those AI prompts can get really complicated. You could, uh, for example, uh, if you have a blog article here, you could tell the AI write a summary for Twitter, or um, you could uh, ask life adv advice like. Um, I wonder, could, could you get the AI to write your uh, university essay for you? <laughs> um, part of it, probably, yeah. But what was your, um, what was your um, study about? It was like... Um, my undergraduate was in sports building. coach. Yeah, my undergraduate was in sports coaching, but, I mean, pick any topic. Um, write an, write uh, an essay say, about the um, relevant... Relative age effect. Whole, uh, <laughs> decreases um, the, the ability to build muscle. Um, well, let's say write an abstract about um, a paper or uh, uh, for for paper about. Oh, I'm excited to see what this comes up with. <laughs> I, I can see it now. Your YouTube videos, cheat it, how to cheat on your university, <laughs> in your university degree, just get AI to generate it for you. It is common knowledge that alcohol consumption can lead to negative effects, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, very nice. 
Yeah, the, um, the thing is, uh, the AI is trained on, um, on um, large amounts of public data, like Reddit and uh, stuff you can find on Google. And um, the quality of results you're getting is like, uh, like an average. Like what are people averagely talking about when they talk about alcohol and uh, building muscle? The AI will put that together. Um, yeah, and now you can use it in your Obsidian Vault. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, I guess it could be nice for your reflection. Maybe you have um, uh, hard I've questions to tackle in... yourself. You can get inspired uh, by the AI. Yeah, I've seen it used in role-playing games as well. Uh, I can't remember the person's channel name, um, but they were using Text Generator, and they basically used AI to create the the world description of the... the I think it was... Um, it was an RPG game, um, but they were used text generator to create the, the description of the world, the description of the, the quest they were on and the narrative. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. And he didn't have to think about anything. He just put in the name of the place that he'd come up with and the rough sort of years that it was made. And then AI did the rest. So hmm. it's exciting to see. And I'm, I'm intrigued to see where it goes as well, especially using Obsidian with that as well, inside of notes and writing. Because I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you can get an output and then ask the AI to expand. You can summarize, expand, you can transform it, like um, rephrase uh, this large text for six year olds and so on. You, you can give it various types of uh, commands. Yeah. And the thing is, um, um, intuitively, we think um, these AIs will get better like 10% next year and 20% uh, the year after that. But it's like with CPUs, it's uh, exponential improvement. So um, this one was the third generation, like OpenAI GPT-3. And uh, next year, OpenAI GPT-4 will be like um, double so good, or three times so good, or four times so good. And it's an exponential improvement. And um, yeah, a couple of years uh, in the future, we will be surprised how great these um, tools will work like. To be honest, it's also a great danger. <laughs> like if you sense about, uh, think about uh, political um, fake fake news and so on. But um, yeah, I guess we have to deal somehow with it. Yeah, that's that's a big conversation that we'll leave for the um, the, the politicians to argue about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I showed uh, most of uh, the stuff I wanted to show in my uh, vault. Um, I uh, let me. Show you. <laughs> I, I wrote about some uh, mindset. Mindset stuff things I have in mind. We talked about dashboards. Mm -hmm. um, um, what I really like about my Obsidian setup is that it allowed me to become master, a master of my own agenda. What I mean is, um, in my past, I was uh, like a slave, a slave for the agendas of others. I, I just worked for my boss and so on. And my own desires, my own pursuits were always the lowest priority. And having um, this uh, strategic planning here in involving uh, my uh, manager work as well as my uh, private desires and my private projects in one place allows me to really balance it and uh, my time and uh, to make sure that I allocate time to both of it. Um, yeah, so this is great about this kind of setup. Like I said, um, if you're thinking about Obsidian versus uh, Notion and Rome, um, Ob Obsidian is just the le leanest and fastest option out there. I really love it. I feel at home in my uh, void I showed you. Um, and uh, I didn't have that feeling with um, Rome. I had that with Notion. But at Notion, uh, at some point, I, feel, I felt just overwhelmed. Too many dashboards, too many databases, too much stuff in the, in the databases. Um, it was hard to find information and so on. Um, I talked about that. Ah, yeah. What, one thing, but uh, I, I talked about it, or we talked about it. Uh, my recommendation would, uh, is avoid procrastination with endless productivity setup improvements. Just create a setup and stick with it, or at least try. <laughs> um, yeah, and one thing I want to add uh, to my setup at the future point, um, I love habit tracking. Like, don't break the chain. I track uh, today I did my exercise and tomorrow I did my exercise. Um, and I'm not doing that right now, but uh, at some point, I guess I could use the data um, database view or something like that. I will um, probably set up a um, habit tracker here too. 
Ja. That's nice. all the stuff I wanted to show. Yeah. Questions. <laughs> Good. Um, I think we've gone through all of the questions as we've sort of gone through the stream. If anyone has any questions, um, put them in the chat now. Uh, it's been it's been really interesting having a look through your vault as well because there's uh, it's it's not just seeing someone else's vault; it's seeing how someone else works uh, and seeing their process. What watching your process go through your vault, I was like, oh yeah. So thank thank you for coming on. Is there anything else? So what we can do is so you said you got a blog post explaining the vault. Um, I'll bring you off share screen. So if you share that link to me, I can put it in the description below. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we close out? I have nothing to add. Uh, I, I can share the template. I, I put it on GitHub uh, mm -hmm. and I made an, uh, another video, but I think now this, this video will be better. Um, where I'm planning it. Uh, to be honest, I, I didn't intend to share it, but um, uh, I wrote a blog article about how I use Obsidian, and um, someone on Twitter told me, or oh, uh, he, he finds it so intriguing, the, the system, um, he would even pay for it to, to have it, and if I could provide a template. And uh, I was so um, wondered about that, because it, the system doesn't feel so special. Um, it feels like just using Obsidian. But uh, maybe it's exactly what uh, you are saying, that um, that um, mm, this planning and more work-related use of Obsidian, that this is maybe uh, quite unique to the community. So I'm happy to share that and um, yeah, and to, to learn about how others use um, Obsidian. Yeah, good. Right, so um, before we sign off, I'm going to say tomorrow I have a live stream with Brian Jenks. I'm bringing him back on the stream. He was the first Obsidian live stream I did. Like way back a year ago um so for anyone in the stream bear in mind it'll be the same time tomorrow that's not on the channel at the moment because uh this one is obviously on youtube right now um but yeah so martin thank you for joining it was it was great fun i learned a lot <laughs> um thank you everyone, for inviting me yeah and anyone else that wants to come on stream and share what you share what you're doing in obsidian um just send me a message and we can we can get it sorted so thank you everyone for uh, watching i'll see you all tomorrow Bye, everyone. Bye.